can you use a multiplus to trickle charge your starter battery? Hi folks, I'm Roger from Wolfgrid, and in this episode we're going to look at the uh, multiplus with a view to trickle charging a starter battery using a feature that not many people know exists in the multiplus. And if they know it exists, there's a little bit of confusion as to whether it does or doesn't operate when the actual multiplus is off. So we're going to be doing a little bit of testing, and going through that and taking you through that. First things first, I'm going to show you where the uh, the spade connector is at the bottom here that you can uh, attach to your starter battery. So the question is often asked, where exactly do you plug this trickle charge in? And on this particular multiplus, this is the 12 200 80 amp one. You can see up there that this cable comes here. There's a little spade connector up here and that is where you connect it on here. It does actually say quite clearly if you read up here, it says trickle charge on the bottom of the multiplus. The different multipluses will have the spade connector in different locations. Uh, you just need to check yours, take the cover off and do a careful read and, and pretty much where you find a spade connector like that is probably where that trickle charge is. There's nothing to turn on or do anything there, you just simply plug that in and connect it up. Right, let me take you through the connections that we have in our battery. So here is the starter battery. Well, this is our little old battery from a car that we're trying as a starter battery. I've connected this, the positive wire, which is coming through through a switch here so that I can control it on and off into the multiplus. At the same time, I'm powering a smart shunt, which is connected on the negative line reason for this is that uh, I wanted to show on the app on my phone just how many amps this is actually showing us going through. Flatten this battery somewhat to uh, make sure that the trickle charge will be as high as possible so we can actually see how many amps are actually flowing into here. So let's check the voltage of this and we'll take it from there. Okay. So let's get our multimeter onto here and check. And we are on 12.68, so call it 12.7, which will be considerably lower than the lithium battery that we're charging. On this deck here, we've got two lithium batteries in parallel. And yes, I know that everybody will say that you should take from the positive one and from the negative the other, but actually in all of our tests, we find it doesn't actually make a material difference. They all balance out at the end of the day. So one of the important things to note is that inside the multiplus is sort of some sort of diode or I don't know, transistor or whatever it is that gets the charge going. And what it is essentially doing is uh, bridging the, uh, the lithium battery bank with the starter battery, allowing a very small current flow, but essentially it is bridging it. The reason I mention that is because the, the idea will be that this battery will come up eventually to the same voltage that this battery is. So currently this is turned off. And uh, as you can see, the voltage on it is 12.73. So very close to what we measured and nothing flowing through the shunt at the moment. So I'm gonna turn this on. And straight away, you can see we have now moved up to uh, 0.41 amps. So interestingly, a lot of people say that uh, it is a four amp trickle charge. I've never known this to be as high as four amps. It's usually less than an amp, depending on the multiplus. Uh, so five watts or half an amp. And uh, you would see straight away, this voltage is now climbing. So it's gone from 12.7 to 12.78, be seven nine any moment now. And this will carry on. It'll carry on trickle charging until the two batteries are exactly the same voltage in theory. Probably never actually get to that point because it's just a like 0.39 of, of an amp flowing between them, which isn't very much. So, but eventually that would uh, get up to a very similar voltage to that. And more importantly, the starter battery would be protected um, by having this sort of connection. So let me take you through the setup that we have here. What we've done is we have uh, connected this starter battery uh, through with this live cable to the spade connector for the trickle charge on the multiplus. 
and uh, we have on the negative terminal coming straight to a smart shunt so we can measure the actual current flow really accurately and uh, obviously the smart shunt is being powered from the positive terminal as well. We, so we have the starter battery here, we have the, the bank of lithium batteries over here. Uh, in most motorhomes this, there would be a single battery, sometimes there are two. And yes, we know that normally you'd connect them with positive here and negative there, but that's fine. We'll uh, just pretend we've done that for the sake of this video. So we've covered how the uh, trickle charge works here and uh, where you plug it in and all that sort of stuff. So let's discuss the alternatives and uh, many of you will know exactly what this is. This is the battery master that we put into a lot of vehicles. We have installed this into countless uh, vehicles and we've sold probably hundreds of them. And these are very, very elementary. Your brown cable goes to your engine and I know from the uh, the creator of this, he chose brown because the engine's dirty, etc. So brown was good to symbolize that. Red goes to your leisure battery and uh, black goes to your chassis, to your common negative. So this battery master kicks in when the uh, leisure battery is 0.75 volts uh, higher than your lead acid battery, in, than your starter battery. So the battery master is, is quite intelligent in the sense that it only kicks in when it is actually needed. So if your starter battery is not running flat, it's got nothing to do, it doesn't actually kick in at all. So in theory, it is going to, and in practice, it is only going to deplete the uh, lithium batteries when uh, it is actually needed, when we need to have the current flowing uh, out of the, the lithium batteries into the lead acid starter battery. So that is a fundamental difference between the battery master and using the trickle charge and the multiplus. The trickle charge and the multiplus will always be on. The only way that you would stop that happening is if you installed a switch like this, whatever. And with a switch like this, you could also put uh, something onto the negative so that the, L the LED showed up. I didn't do it in this video, but you could have it so that the LED actually works. And uh, that would be quite a, a good way of, when you don't want it to be draining your lithium battery into the starter battery, that it's turned off. But I can't see, I can't really see a situation where you would actually want that because what if you forget, you leave it for a few weeks, starter battery goes flat. And as we all know, when that goes flat, there's no point in trying to repair it or keep it going. You may as well just get rid of it because you'll never you, you'll never have peace of mind that uh, it's not going to fail just when you need it most. So, yeah, I, I'm not sure that I would install such a switch. If I was to use my MultiPlus to trickle charge the starter, I would just leave it to trickle charge the starter. And yes, it would carry on drawing a little bit out of these almost permanently, but that's fine, it can do that. So hopefully that's uh, useful if you have a MultiPlus use the tr trickle charge facility or you could consider a battery master. Uh, this is about 70 pounds of British money and uh, is based on 12 volts. So if you've got a 24 volt system, obviously this wouldn't work for you. If you've got a full 24 volt system and you have a MultiPlus, then you can use the trickle charge because it'll be outputting 24 volts then. So you could use the MultiPlus to trickle charge your starter battery in a 24 volt system and that would be quite handy. If you have any comments or, or questions, um, leave them down below and uh, we'll get back to you. But uh, hopefully that's useful and hopefully that has dispelled some of the myths that this thing only actually works when it is turned on. It works all the time, day in, day out. And in that sense, we'll always protect that starter battery. In theory, you will always have a really good voltage on your starter battery and it should swing that battery nicely every single time. Cheers, see you in the next episode.